After rain and storms earlier today, it looks drier for your Sunday, but it doesn't last for long. I'll let you know when strong storms could make a return coming up. Also tonight, see how one of Kentucky's rising stars is being honored by the Music Hall of Fame. Plus, see how a mural is capturing the history of a downtown Richmond building. The message behind the painting. Live from Lexington, our home, your news. This is Fox 56 News at 10. Hello, it's good to have you with us this Saturday. I'm Bodie Brooks. Well, it took its time, but after a wet start to the weekend, the sun finally peaked out for, for most of us. But some spotty showers are entirely out of the forecast, so let's get right to the weather authorities, Peyton Hinkle. Peyton. Yeah, that's right, Bodie. It wasn't too bad out there this evening. I stepped out for dinner. There's a little bit of sunshine. We do have some more cloud cover working in overnight tonight, and there is still the risk for a shower or two. But overall, it doesn't look too bad as we head into your Sunday. But then we're talking about storms returning once again. Let's go ahead and take a look at radar right now. You can see it is dry across the entire Fox 56 News viewing area, but you don't have to go far to find some more rain and storms. Once you head back up towards the Cincinnati metro area and Boone, Kenton and Campbell County here, even over into Claremont County, Ohio there, you can see a line of some shower and storm activity. The good news, this isn't really on the strong side and there's not much lightning with this, if any at all. This is pushing off to the south and east, so I wouldn't be surprised if a few, especially of our north Northern counties might get a light shower or a storm later, but overall the trend is drier, not uh, more rain overall. So that is some good news. And again, most of us dry. You can see that on the home view out here overlooking downtown Lexington. This is atop our studios here in Chevy Chase. Not any problems out there if you're in the city tonight. Temperatures right now, not too bad. It's still in the upper 70s, 78 degrees. And again, we have some partly cloudy skies right now, but clouds are going to be on the increase once again overnight. Overall, though, as we head into your Sunday, it doesn't look too bad. But out there tonight, again, we're partly cloudy right now. We'll slowly fall into the low 70s once we get into the early morning hours, again, under those mostly cloudy skies. But and I can't rule out a shower for somebody, maybe a rumble of thunder. But again, the trend is drier tonight. As we head into your Sunday, you can see we start the day with some clouds. I do think it's partly sunny, especially as we head into the middle of the day and afternoon. Temperatures making it up into the mid 80s, but overall not too bad. Clouds begin to increase again tomorrow evening and into the overnight, though, and that's ahead of our next system. I'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Bodie. All right, Peyton, thank you. The Kentucky Music Hall of Fame is honoring one of the bluegrass's rising stars in Western country music. Our Vossi Prokos was there as the museum unveiled a new temporary exhibit honoring the young yodeling star Phoebe White. Vossi. Phoebe White has been singing since she was seven years old. The Kentucky Music Hall of Fame and Museum wanted to honor the Laurel County native on her growing success. An old soul and a young body. 13-year-old Phoebe White now gets to see her name among other of Kentucky's future stars. I don't have words. I was speechless. I could not wait to see it. But it's just such, it's so much, I love it so much. I'm just so grateful that they've gave me this. Executive Director of the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame and Museum, Jessica Blankenship says, Phoebe is the youngest person to have an honorary exhibit here. She's representing Kentucky and she's representing our future in music. And uh, we just... You know, it, it was a no-brainer to have her on board as one of our honorees. So I heard Liam Ryan sing Blue, which I thought was really cool because she did like a voice flip and stuff. And after that, the next day, I went downstairs to my basement where it was kind of nice and calm and stuff. And I practiced and I practiced. And by the evening, I kind of yodel. The rising star was invited to guest perform with Riders in the Sky at the Grand Ole Opry at the beginning of the month. It was just such a great experience. Everyone was so nice. And Riders in the Sky was so much fun playing with them. I loved them so much. Folk singer Michael Jonathan, who produced and arranged her album, Unexpected, says it's artists like Phoebe who brings out the love for yodeling. I think that America is in a desperate search for its own front porch, its spirit of front porch. It's a hard world right now. I think Kentucky is sort of the comfortable rocking chair on that front porch. And it's artists like Phoebe. It's little kids that present the spirit of that beautiful, love transaction that music and art is supposed to be. Phoebe says she grew up listening to a variety of older music at home and was inspired by other artists that helped her yodel. We've always had 70s, 80s music around the house, but my biggest influence are Patsy Cline, Roy Rogers, Del Evans, and Patsy Montana. 
and land runs. In addition to her voice, Phoebe also plays a variety of instruments. I play guitar, mandolin, fiddle, bass, ukulele. Still, at 13 years old, Phoebe says she has many goals still ahead. I want to be on the Grand Ole Opry again. I want to make a new album, which I'm working on writing all the songs for. And you can visit that special one-year honorary exhibit at the Kentucky Hall of Fame and Music on the daily from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you know, Bodie, I was driving in the car on the way home, and I could not stop trying to yodel, but it's not that good, so. Well, hopefully you can get a little <laughs> bit of practice there from Phoebe. You want to hear it really quick? Uh, if we got time, yeah, sure. <laughs> Yodely. <laughs> but I definitely need to take some lessons from Phoebe. All right, I'll keep a lookout for you on Spotify. Thank you, Bossy. <laughs> Jefferson County Public Schools are canceling more classes as the district tries to figure out a fix to its bus routes. The district confirmed school will be out Monday and Tuesday of the coming week. This comes after some students didn't get home until as late as 10 p.m. on Wednesday, the first day of school. JCPS spokeswoman Carolyn Callahan said in an email today that Tuesday will be a work day for all JCPS staff. Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio said in a statement sent to families that they need more time to complete the necessary short-term adjustments to our transportation system after trying new bus routes this year. Polio believes JCPS will have a remedy for the short-term, but, but they know they need more permanent adjustments. Back in Fayette County, students are getting ready to return to school on Wednesday. The Lexington Police Department is giving out some tips to drivers on how to deal with the increase in traffic that comes with the start of school. First, they say if the school bus stop arm is extended, traffic must stop. The area 10 feet around a school bus is the most dangerous for children, so stop far enough back to allow them space to safely enter and exit the bus. Stop and yield to pedestrians crossing at a crosswalk or intersection and use extreme caution while in school zones. Two Kentucky lawmakers are trying to expand access to free meals at school. Louisville Senator Cassie Chambers Armstrong and Lexington State Representative Chad All spoke at Peaks Mill Elementary in Frankfort about legislation they're proposing for next year's session that would expand the income eligibility requirements to allow more schools to be a part of a federal program to give meals to every student for free. The lawmakers say an additional 20,000 Kentucky students could benefit from the program if the bill makes it to the governor's desk. We know that there are certain students that the only hot meal that they're going to get is one that, they, that we provide them here in schools. Having a full belly is the most important way to ensure that you're going to help that child learn and succeed. The General Assembly will meet to consider new legislation when session begins in January. This, the history of a downtown Richmond building is coming to life in a new mural. The building is owned by the nonprofit Enrich, which helps people in active addiction recovery. People can find employment and have some support getting back on their feet. Mural artist Ella Elias Reynolds says Enrich wanted to honor the previous businesses that had become part of the old building's history in the art piece. The mural took a few weeks to design, but only three days to paint. But I think it's just important for people to remember its past and their mission, you know, is to kind of help people get a second chance. So I feel like that mirrors the mural design in that the building was once all of these businesses, but now it's given a new life into their mission, which is to help bring new life to those people that are struggling. Residents were also able to have some fun in a community run and block party last week and got to be a part of the design, placing their shoe prints on the artwork. Green Thumbs gathered for a gardening celebration this morning in Lexington. The event by Lexington Parks and Rec gave people the chance to learn about how gardening is done in some of the city's prettiest parks like Raven Run Nature Sanctuary and McConnell Springs Park. There were also a variety of environmental activities and info about farm-to-table food. It's a way for people to not only learn more about different nature activities, but they also discover a lot of neighborhood parks that they haven't been to before because they see our schedule and they want to go to this or they enjoy one activity and they go to a few more that week. So it's been great feedback so far and, you know, we're really excited to continue it. If you missed out on today's event, watch over Lexington Parks and Rec's calendar over the upcoming weeks.
A local nonprofit held an event to help expecting mothers prepare for the big arrival. The Nest held their first community baby shower this morning. Expecting parents were invited in to support their little ones. Through donations and partnerships, the Nest was able to provide all mothers with diapers, wipes, bottles, gift bags, and new car seats. Along with all the goodies, trained staff showed how to correctly install their new car seats free of charge. We simply didn't have enough resources to provide for them. So we kind of sat down as a group and we were like, what can we do about it? Um, and then we researched and we saw that some people have had huge success doing baby showers. So we just put some stuff together and we reached out to people, we reached out to partners, um, and we were able to kind of make something out of nothing. The Nest is hoping to make the community baby shower a quarterly event. This way they are able to help alleviate some of the financial burden and stress the new parents often face. Still ahead, recovery efforts are underway in Maui as the death toll from destructive fires continues to soar. Now new questions are being raised about the preparedness of the state's emergency system. Details ahead. The first 10 minutes of Fox 56 News at 10 were brought to you commercial free. Sponsored by UK Federal Credit Union. This is Fox 56 News. As recovery efforts ramp up in Hawaii following this week's deadly wildfires, new questions about why the state's emergency alert system did not work as intended and how officials will warn residents when the next crisis comes. Fox's Matt Napolitano has that story. The wildfires burning through the island of Maui this week are now the deadliest natural disaster to hit Hawaii since it became a state in 1959. With hundreds of people still unaccounted for, officials expect to find more bodies in the rubble. Red Cross and FEMA are working to provide temporary shelter to the thousands of people left homeless. Fueled by dry brush and high winds, the fires grew out of control so quickly, most residents had just minutes to react. I think this was an impossible situation. The lack of communication as the flames spread is raising new questions about Hawaii's emergency alert system. Warning texts went out, but limited cell service meant many did not receive them. The island also has emergency sirens, but they did not go off during the fire. Perhaps there wasn't enough time. I've also heard possibly the communications, the cell towers, the, the ability, uh, even perhaps some of these uh, these uh, alarm towers uh, went out. There, there, there must be an investigation into this. 
on why residents were not properly uh, informed with time to evacuate. As the smoke clears, residents are returning to what's left of their communities in shock and disbelief that neighborhoods they once called home are now just a memory. Everyone who came here it was their happy place. Although we still have that sense of community, it's not going to be the same for a while. FEMA estimates it will cost more than five and a half billion dollars to rebuild, a project that will likely take years. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. We had some rain across the area today, but things are drying out for Sunday, but it doesn't last for too long. I'm talking about the risk for strong to severe storms as we start the work week coming up after the break. Mega Millions jackpot is $36 million, and tonight's Powerball jackpot is $194 million. Bon appetit. You're watching Fox 56 News, our home. Your news. Now, your forecast from Fox 56 News, the weather authority. Well, I'm pretty sure, Peyton, they call it the air that you can wear. I feel like it's been a lot muggier yes. uh, the past <laughs> couple days, but thankfully next week, a little later on, we should have a nice little taste of fall, but there's a little hiccup before we get there. Yeah, so we got to get through the storms first as we start the work week. Luckily, tomorrow we're kind of in between systems, so I don't think Sunday's too bad out there. It'll still be a little muggy, though, but then there is uh, light at the end of the tunnel, as we like to say for sure. So let's go ahead and take a look outside. If, uh, if we go over to the weather center here, we can take a look at some of our tower cameras, our home view across the area, and you can see that over my shoulder. It looks pretty good across the area. We're talking partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. It really just depends on where you are. Overnight, clouds will continue to be on the increase. The good news is I think most of us are dry for the overnight. Let's take a look at radar, though. We can show you kind of what's taking place and what that setup looks like. You can see that here. There's not much to talk about as far as radar goes.
shows across the Fox 56 viewing area, but just up to the north, right along the Ohio River, just to the south of Cincinnati, you can see some of those showers, maybe a couple rumbles of thunder. These are pushing off to the south and east, and we may very well see a few of these um, nick our northern counties, but I think most of us are staying dry overnight tonight, which is some good news for us across the area. So let's take a look at temperatures right now, though. You can see here it is 78 Lexington, 73 just to the south there down in Richmond, 72 out in McKee. It's a little cooler just to the south in the upper 60s. I think most of us fall right around 70 degrees, but again, once you get out in the valleys and southern parts of Kentucky, it could get a little cooler up into the upper 60s, but overall not too bad. So tonight again here in the city, right around 71, mostly cloudy. There could be a spotty, uh, spotty storm or two, but again, I think most of us are staying dry overnight tonight and it won't be too bad out there as we head into your Sunday. Again, not bad at all. Rain chances very low. There is the spotty chance for a shower or storm. Temperatures in the mid 80s, partly sunny, partly cloudy skies. Uh, not too bad out there for your Sunday. And again, we're kind of in between systems and I can't rule out a shower, maybe a storm for somebody. But then things change as we head into the day on Monday and that's what we're tracking as our next big thing. You can see that here pretty much once we start the work week, we're talking about the chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some of them could be on the strong to severe side. We could even be talking about damaging winds, uh, very heavy rainfall, and even some hail. Notice once that cold front sweeps through, though, we start to clear things out for your Tuesday, and it's going to feel like fall around here instead of August. High temperatures only making it up into the 70s. But first, again, we do have a level two risk for pretty much the entire Fox 56 News viewing area for Monday for severe weather. So you'll want to make sure you have weather alerts turned on. A great way to do that, download the Fox 56 Weather Authority app. You can scan this QR code on your screen here and get alerts customized for wherever you are. And again, get those severe weather alerts. You can track the storms yourself with our radar in the app and we even post updated videos in there throughout the day that are exclusive to the app so you can stay informed and up to date. So I highly recommend downloading that. If we go ahead and take a look at the seven day forecast here, not too bad again tomorrow. Partly sunny. There is the risk for a shower or two, maybe a storm. The next big thing is Monday. I think we do see widespread rain and storm chances, but look at this as we head into the middle and end of the week. Temperatures on Tuesday will not get out of the 70s. It'll feel like fall for sure around here. Lower humidity, cooler. It looks really nice as we head into the end of the week and into the weekend, but temperatures start to warm back up as we head into next weekend, but looks like we're keeping some sunshine around for the next little bit. So we need to enjoy it while it lasts for sure. Bodie. See, Peyton, I got my eye on those lower temperatures a little later in the week. That's what I'll be looking forward to, but we'll take what we can get. All right, turning now to sports, a former Kentucky cat is, uh, I believe, making a debut on the Tennessee Gridiron. Yeah, he was a guy that entertained UK fans for a while here for a couple of years at Kroger Field, Will Levis. Now, there was a weird night on draft night. We were talking about it here at Fox 56 Sports. We were there in Kansas City for the NFL draft when Levis just slipped down that draft board and slipped out of the first round. That was a tough moment, but for him, now this is a new chapter. Preseason football is here. Titans fans are hoping to get some of that same magic that Kentucky fans got out of this guy. Good debut for him. We're going to talk about some of the pluses and minuses next in sports. Stay with us. Download the Fox 56 Weather Authority app today.
Now, Fox 56 Sports. Welcome back. Ever since NFL Draft Night, Will Levis has been put really in a different conversation than he did previously. He was supposed to be a top 10 pick, then fell out of the first round and was just waiting and waiting and waiting awkwardly that night. But he kept going. When he got swept up by the Titans at the start of round two, there was a feeling that this thing could really work. Now, Ryan Tannehill is QB1 in Tennessee, but that's not going to last forever. So Levis has a battle with Malik Willis, who was drafted the year before in the third round. Now, Willis started the preseason game today against the Bears. He got more playing time than Levis did. He went 16 for 25, 189 yards and an interception. Levis went 9 for 14. That's it. He had 85 yards and a pick himself. He really needs to cut down on those turnovers, which really was one of the hits on him in the draft process. After his two years at Kentucky, he was careless with the football at times, and NFL teams were a little weary about it, so he needs to change that. Their next preseason game is a week from tonight, so he'll look to try to build off of this one. Hopefully get some more playing time. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals played their first of three preseason games last night at Paycor Stadium. Did not go too well for the Cincy boys. They lost to the Packers 36-19. They didn't even score an offensive touchdown, just a pick six from Tyson Anderson. Now, there's no Gerald Burrow, of course. He got injured, and he's not playing in these things anyways. Trevor Simeon and Jake Browning are fighting for the QB2 spot. They each threw a pick as well. Burrow was seen throwing on the field early yesterday before the game, so that's a great sign. Hopefully he's ready for week one. For the team losing this game, it's no big deal, right? It's just preseason week one. No significant starters played, but it's still a game that Coach Taylor wants to win. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw some good things. They moved the ball at times. You know, we just ultimately, their job is to get us in the end zone. And offensively, we didn't get the ball in the end zone at all. Kicked some field goals, had the defensive touchdown. Um, but ultimately, that's what we're judged on, protecting the football and getting the, getting the team in the end zone, and um, not enough of that tonight. Yeah, again, not a huge deal. They got week two in the preseason, and that's the big one where some starters play, so we'll see how they do there. Kentucky and EKU football both holding scrimmages today to wrap up week two of fall camp, getting closer and closer to the start of college football season. So we got reports from both of those in the next half hour. Bodie, stay tuned. Looking, to it, looking forward to it, Mike. Stay tuned. GOP presidential candidates were once again in Iowa enjoying the state fair and making their pitch, but they were also commenting on the Hunter Biden situation as some lawmakers aren't happy about a special counsel pick. More on that ahead. You're watching Fox 56 News. Our home, your news.
Live from Lexington, our home, your news. This is Fox 56 News. Thanks for sticking with us this half hour. I'm Bodie Brooks. The Republican candidates for president have been converging on the Iowa State Fairgrounds, trying to drum up support for their campaigns. The crowds at the Iowa State Fair today were the largest since the event began on Thursday. The Hawkeye State is home to the first in the nation GOP caucuses. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, his wife Casey, and their children enjoyed some time riding in bumper cars. DeSantis is former President Trump's top polling rival, but his numbers lag far behind the former chief executive. The governor told supporters he has reservations about the appointment of a special prosecutor in the Hunter Biden investigation. I think they're trying to checkmate that investigation. This is going to be a total sham special counsel. You got the same guy who had been doing it uh, with kid gloves anyways. Uh, and I think they're trying to kneecap the House's ability to investigate. Former President Trump was cheered as he made his way through the crowds. The Iowa GOP caucuses are scheduled for next January 15th. Attorney General Merrick Garland's decision to elevate federal prosecutor David Weiss to special counsel in the Hunter Biden investigation is meeting with criticism from some members of the GOP. Some are taking issue with the appointment of a special counsel itself. Others don't think Weiss is the best person to fill the position. Fox News correspondent Alexandria Hoff takes a look. There are Republicans who have always been against a special counsel being assigned, fearing that it would limit the House's investigative power in the ongoing Biden family probe. Others, like Senator Chuck Grassley, have taken more of an issue with who received the new title. I was one of those that sent a letter saying we should have a special counsel. On the other hand, uh, I have some question about Weiss doing it. Grassley said that's because misconduct in the long-running investigation was alleged by IRS whistleblowers. In May, former IRS agent Gary Shapley testified that attorney David Weiss previously sought special counsel status because he felt limited in his powers to fully investigate Hunter Biden. Weiss and Attorney General Garland disputed the claims. We're all scratching our heads here. They're, they're not hiding the ball anymore. We have good reason not to trust Mr. Weiss. Now, remember that in, in over the course of about five weeks this summer, he changed his story three different times. U.S. Attorney Weiss requested special counsel status this week, despite previously stating that he did not need it. And to Gary Shapley, that sounds like vindication. This announcement uh, uh, yesterday is, is absolute unquestionable vindication of Special Agent Ziegler and I coming forward because this is the crux of the issue that we brought forward to House Ways and Means Committee and the House Oversight Committee. Democratic Congressman Ami Barra provided his thoughts on it all earlier. I don't think it's good for the country to see a former president um, on trial or you know a president's son on trial. I just would hope that there's a way to resolve these without putting the country through either one of these cases. Critics also argue that appointing a sitting U.S. attorney goes against DOJ regulations, which state that a special counsel should come from outside the Justice Department. In Washington, Alexandria Hoff, Fox News. Well, we are getting a quiet weather day before the forecast really ramps up to start the week. Peyton Hinkle is timing it all out for us. Peyton. Yeah, that's right, Bodie. It's kind of the calm before the storm, as we like to say, as we head into your Sunday, because things are really going to go downhill as we start the uh, start of the work week. Let's take a look at radar right now, though. It's dry across the entire Fox 56 news viewing area, but just up in portions of northern Kentucky, southwest Ohio here, right along the Ohio River, you can see some shower and storm activity. Again, this isn't very impressive, but it is pushing off to the south and east and might clip some of our counties over the next couple of hours. So keep that in mind while most of us are going to be dry for most of the night. There is the risk for a shower or two for us out there. Temperatures right now 78 still in Lexington. We're cooling off out in eastern Kentucky down into the low 70s, even upper 60s down in Williamsburg and Monticello. Now, as we head into the night overnight tonight, temperatures going to fall into the low 70s here in the city. Again, upper 60s out in the valleys and in portions of eastern Kentucky. It'll be partly to eventually mostly cloudy skies for us. But again, there is the risk for a shower or storm overnight. I don't think it's very widespread. I don't think everybody sees rain, but there is that chance as we head into the day tomorrow, though. Again, it's the calm before the storm. We get a little bit of a break, partly sunny skies, and then we're talking about shower and storm chances for the start of the work week. I'll have all those details and time it out for you coming up in just a few minutes. Bodie. All right, Peyton, thank you. Up next, we go around the world in 56. Why an icon of France was evacuated. The scare that brought the tourist attraction to a standstill. Next. You're watching Fox 56 News.
Our home, your news. An evacuation and a world-famous icon and why South Koreans are protesting against Japan. All those stories and more as we go around the world in 56. There were some tense moments in Paris today when the Eiffel Tower and its surroundings had to be evacuated following a bomb threat. The action was a precautionary measure and authorities later deemed it a false alarm and allowed people back into the area. Authorities say it's rare to have to evacuate the area around the famed tower, but it does happen on a Occasion. In China, torrential rain set off a mudslide that killed at least two people. Two houses were also destroyed along with roads, bridges, and power supply facilities. A search and rescue effort is underway for 16 people who were reported missing. Ecuadorians gather for a final farewell to former presidential candidate Fernando Villa Vicencio, days after his assassination. Family and friends of the former lawmaker held a private mass in his honor Friday. Armed police stood guard during the services. Ecuador is holding several men in custody in connection to Via Vicencio's murder. A lot of South Koreans are on edge about Japan's impending release of nuclear wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant, which was damaged during a tsunami 12 years ago. Although the wa wastewater has been treated, the plant is causing tremendous concern. Hundreds of South Koreans staged a protest in Seoul today. The demonstration was the latest in a string of rallies that have been going on for weeks. Up next, five things to know before you go to bed. Just how much money are families spending as college kids head back to school? Scan the QR code on your screen now and download the Fox 56 News app, sponsored by the Kentucky Lottery. Over $4.8 billion in grants and scholarships.
Back to school season is here and why gas prices are staying steady this summer as summer wraps up. These are five things to know before you go to bed. Significant spending by college students and their families is expected to translate into a boost in retail sales this fall. In fact, the students and their families are expected to lay out a record amount of money this year as demand for electronics and dorm decor increases. Some of their money will be going to custom art for their dorm rooms, air purifiers, mini fridges, and coffee makers. An annual survey by the National Retail Federation says back to college spending has spiked by 40% just in the past four years. Parents, it's time again to shop till you drop for kids, and a survey knows what you remember dropping in the cart for school needs. A cross-generational Quizlet survey reveals the top school supplies parents bought for their kids to start up learning again. The survey says the top memorable items purchased over the years are notebooks at 74% and wooden pencils at 73%. The survey also says the top item that makes us feel nostalgia for school is Elmer's glue. A lot of people want to live in Manhattan and they're laying out a lot of money to do it. The average rent in the New York City Bureau has spiked to a new record of $5,588 a month. Although the city has undergone a drop in population since the pandemic, average rent prices in Manhattan are climbing. They're now up 30% from what they were in 2019, just as the pandemic was getting started. The, the current average rent of almost $5,600 a month is up 9% over just last year. Late summer travelers got lucky this week on gas prices, but in some states, the prices have inched up. The American Automobile Association says the national average for gas prices stayed at $3.82 a gallon, despite rising oil prices and gas demand. Kentucky is below the national average at $3.53 a gallon. AAA says the higher oil prices will lead to higher gas pump costs. Ten states shelled out more for gas. The top five, Ohio, Arizona, Arizona, Alaska, Idaho, and Wyoming all up more than five cents with Ohio up 13 cents. Now these new Croc shoes resemble a popular breakfast pastry. The Comfort Shoe brand is partnering with Pop-Tarts for a mashup of their classic brands. Fans can get the new Croc Tarts flavor, which features a strawberry center and no frosting on top, as well as matching off-white Crocs to go with it. Pop-Tarts says the collaboration came together because of how similar the two products look. To add some color, the Crocs come with special Pop-Tarts accessories known as gibbets. The the only way to get the limited edition items is by signing up on crocktarts.com to be selected to purchase it for $70. You can find me wearing those out in the club. That was five things to know before you go to bed. Now let's get another look at Peyton. Now let's get another look at the forecast with Peyton. Now your forecast from Fox 56 News, the weather authority. Well, not too much going on out there this evening across the area. It's pretty dry at the moment across the home view from Lexington to Paris. Same story down in Somerset and London. Pretty much just partly to mostly cloudy skies. You can actually see some lightning off in the distance, though, of our Paris camera. And I'll show you where that's coming from because it is still a little ways away. You can see these showers and storms just to the north of the viewing area, right on the Boone, Kent, and Campbell County line, working into portions of Grant, Pendleton, back into Bracken County as well. These are beginning to push off to the south and east. And while most of us are dry and most of us will stay dry tonight, I can't rule out a few of these showers and storms, especially for our uh, northern counties across the viewing area. So be on the lookout. Portions of Harrison County back towards Nicholas, even Bourbon and out into Fleming County. Be on the lookout over the next couple hours as these are working in your direction. Now notice it's a pretty thin band here, so these aren't really going to last very long, but may have a few strikes of lightning, some rumbles of thunder as these push through. And again, not everybody's going to see rain tonight, but there is the chance for a storm or two. Temperatures right now, we're 77 Lexington, 73 Richmond. We're in the low 70s already out in eastern Kentucky, 68 Williamsburg, and 69 down in Monticello. So again, not a whole lot going on tonight. Temperatures here in the city dipping into the low 70s, mostly cloudy, and again, Spotty storm chances are possible, but again, I think a lot of the area stays dry. Be on the lookout, though, especially our northern counties where those storms look like they're headed in your direction over the next couple of hours. Now, tomorrow for your Sunday, 
not too bad. Partly sunny skies pretty much uh, for the majority of the day. Temperatures making it up into the mid 80s. It will still be a little muggy out there, but again, not too bad. Notice clouds will begin to increase again as we head into the evening and into the overnight, and that's indicative of our next weather maker as it begins to work its way in here, and that's what we're tracking as the next big thing. Pretty much once we wake up Monday, we'll have the risk for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the strong side and it does look like uh, this is going to last throughout the day. So rain and storms likely some of them could be severe. The main threats would be the threat for damaging winds, very heavy rainfall and some hail. For that reason, Storm Prediction Center for Monday has placed our entire viewing area under a level two risk for severe weather. So make sure you stay weather aware. It's a great opportunity to download our Weather Authority app exclusive to us. You can get updated alerts for your location and of course up to minute videos and updates and things like that to keep you in the know, especially on severe weather days. You can even track the storms yourself on our radar. All right, seven day forecast looks like this again tomorrow. We're in between systems, so it's not not too bad. There's a chance for a spotty storm or two, but overall, I think we're pretty much dry, partly sunny out there. Monday is our next big weather maker. Showers and storms are likely. Some of those could be on the strong side. Look at this. It's turning fall like by the time we get to Tuesday. High temperatures only in the mid 70s, so it's going to feel very much like fall and not like August. Temperatures begin to work their way back up, but look at that. We're keeping the sunshine around for the next little bit, so it doesn't look too bad once we get through Monday, but we got to get through the chance for some strong storms first. All right, stay with us. Michael's back with sports after the break. Download the Fox 56 Weather Authority app today. Now, Fox 56 Sports, sponsored by Arby's. Welcome back. Week two of fall camp is in the books for Kentucky football. Fan day was a great opportunity for BBM to get an up-close look at the boys, but the hope inside that locker room and in this coaching staff is that the team is going to look a lot different than it did in this game up until week one. Now, it should be improved as they get out there in Kroger Field. They should be cleaner and up to speed and better physical shape. All that should come in the next couple weeks until Saturday the 26th, and then fall camp is over. It's game week. Ball State's going to be right around the corner. Before we know it, this team is dotting its I's and crossing its T's. Now, they're going to be zoned in, but for now, they're just working on themselves before they can worry about anyone else they're going to line up against. It's up to the leaders in that locker room to carry this weight and get the young guys up to speed, something Mark Stoops is pretty happy with so far. 
I'm pleased, but it's a con it's going to be constant. You know, that's a season long situation where we need to make sure, you know, we're going to hit adversity some way, some form, somehow. And uh, how do we respond and how does the leadership respond? Yeah, uh, a lot of young cats stepped up a lot, big time when we needed to. Um, just the defense just flying around. You know, we just started over for real. So it's just good seeing everybody just excited, flying around, sideline to sideline. In the presence of a legend, Coach Roy Kidd, the old man, a legend, came out today in EKU scrimmage for Alumni Day. A number of former players were there to sing Kevin on the Hill. That's their, of course, fantastic song with current players. Coach Kidd, the most notable alum, a historic figure for this program. They were at the stadium that bears his name, Roy Kidd Stadium, for the first scrimmage of fall camp. The white team put together some strong drives. Braden Sloan is RB1, but Keandre McGlure has some talent. You see him right here, an impressive run. Bouncing outside, getting inside the five, the junior, he's got some speed. Now Parker McKinney, the QB1, the eternal colonel, he led the singing of the cabin on the hill. Threw an incredible fade ball right here to Brian Johnson. He goes up and gets it for the TD. Parker did throw six, pick six, but threw a couple touchdowns. Secondary makes another impressive play here. D-line getting no pressure. Parker's got all day. A good 50-50 ball, but broken up by Mike Smith. What a hit right there. Jaden Smith took one. He ate it, though. Parker throws another TD here at the end of this drive, and the offense played pretty well. They did win the scrimmage, as they would say, and a, just overall a good live opportunity for this team. You know, camp's not supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a little miserable. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't want it to be miserable people, you know what I mean? But, I, you know, it's got to be tough, and that's one thing that I was really – disappointed in in our playoff game our toughness and um, and so I think we we made that our calling for this year and we're trying to do better at that I mean this was just kind of a building block in that process um, obviously the first scrimmage a, the, a lot of the first live work we get with those guys um, you know just making sure we're on the same page and timing and there was definitely some issues out here and stuff that we got to get fixed but you know that's that's what practice is for and next week you know we're going to look to get that stuff corrected Coach Wells was getting into this guy, especially in the trenches. You love to see it. Now, another team getting ready to start its season, UK Volleyball, starts this Thursday for an exhibition against Western Kentucky before starting the season on the first of the month and a home-and-home home against Pitt. The Cats are playing in Rupp Arena this year with Memorial Coliseum being renovated. They're finally getting AC in there. And this program's just trying to get back to the national title level that they reached three years ago. Yeah, it's, I mean, obviously winning the national championship is difficult. In our sport, only 12 universities in the entire country have ever done. We were the 11th, Wisconsin was the 12th. We were the first SEC, so it's a challenge. Um, but you need to be physical, you need to play clean, um, you need to serve really tough. Big thanks to Hannah Jackson, our photojournalist, for helping us out getting that. Coach Skinner and Coach Stoops, a lot of good stuff. So we're just excited for September. Get some action here. Fall is creeping up on us, and we're going to even have a little taste of fall next week. But we there's some storms on the way first. Yeah, we got to get through the storms first. Tonight, there is the risk for a couple storms. Overall, though, most of us stay dry most of the night. But just be aware, could be a couple rumbles of thunder. Tomorrow, though, we're in between systems. Partly sunny, chance of a pop-up shower or storm. And then as we head into the day, Monday, that's when there is a severe threat. So stay weather aware. But look at that. Tuesday, 75 degrees as the high. All it's right. going to be fall-like for sure. Keep your eye on the sky. You'll have a good night. We'll see you all back here tomorrow night.